Hi, today we'll be talking about gardening. In this short video tutorial, you will learn how to monitor the soil moisture of your indoor plants using a capacitive sensor and a Raspberry Pi single board computer. The video is divided into chapters, including wiring, programming with Python, and of course, short demonstrations. This video is possible thanks to the support of PCBWay. If you have designed a printed circuit board and you need a high quality prototype delivered fast, please visit PCBWay.com to place an order. PCBWay are capable of manufacturing uh, printed circuit boards with up to 14 layers. They support different covers for the solder mask and the seal screen. PCBWay can also manufacture flexible printed circuit boards. Furthermore, they offer assembly, CNC and 3D printing services. Recently, I have designed several new add-on boards for Raspberry Pi. I used the free and open source software KiCad, exported the Gerber files and thanks to PCBWay I got these prototypes which are LED free with green cover and white seal screen. This video is for the Raspberry Pi single board computer. It's not suitable for the Raspberry Pi Pico microcontroller. These capacitive soil moisture sensors are analog devices. We need to convert the analog signal to digit in order to process it with any programming language. Unfortunately, unlike Raspberry Pi Pico, the Raspberry Pi single board computer does not have a built-in analog to digital converter. The solution is to use an external analog to digital converter. We have two options. Option one, to use it on a breadboard with a bunch of wires. Option two is to use a dedicated analog board for Raspberry Pi, which has an analog to digital converter. I'm going to show you both ways. However, it is simpler to use something like Anavi Gardening Micro Hat, which is specially designed for using soil moisture sensors. There is a huge variety of low-cost water and soil moisture sensors on the market. They come in different shapes and colors. Although all of these sensors are analog, there is a significant difference in the way they work. We can divide them into two major types, resistive and capacitive sensors. Resistive soil moisture sensors have a very simple hardware design. They provide low current, a low voltage and measure the change of the resistance. Their major disadvantage is the corrosion as a result of combining electric current with water. Because of this, resistive sensors often broke and even worse, pollute the soil of your plants. Several years ago, I also designed a resistive soil moisture sensor using KiCad. Due to the explained major disadvantages, I decided to stop using it and replace it with a capacitive sensor. The electrical component known as a capacitor consists of three pieces, a positive plate, a negative plate and the space in between them known as dielectric. A capacitive moisture sensor does not measure moisture directly. Instead, it works by measuring the change in capacitance caused by the change in the dielectric. The capacitive soil moisture sensor uses a 555 timer integrated circuit that produces a voltage proportional to the capacitor inserted in the soil. The major advantage is that capacitive soil moisture sensors avoid corrosion and have significantly longer lifespan. The popular low-cost capacitive soil moisture sensor modules are available as hardware version 1.2 and 2.0. Both versions are almost identical and work the same way. This tutorial is appropriate for both of them. Step number one is to do the wiring. As I have already explained, we need an analog to digital converter to read the data from the capacitive soil moisture sensor. I'm using microchip MCP3002 ADC. Let me first show you how to wire MCP3002 to a Raspberry Pi on a breadboard. I'm providing 5 volts to power it and it is connected over the serial peripheral interface, also known as SPI. Microchip MCP3002 is a 10-bit analog to digital converter with a couple of channels. The analog output of the soil moisture sensor has to be attached to one of the two channels on the ADC. The wiring is the same no matter if you're using a capacitive or a resistive soil moisture sensor. However, there is a difference in the source code. 
SPI is a synchronous serial interface for short distance communication. The SPI bus specifies four logic signals, serial clock, uh, MOSI, which stands for master out slave in, MISO, which stands for master in slave out, and chip select. There are dedicated pins for SPI on the header of any Raspberry Pi single board computer. There is an alternative, easier way to do the same thing without a breadboard. Instead of using a bunch of wires and a breadboard, I recommend you to get a Raspberry Pi out on board with analog to digital converter. I have designed Anavi Gardening Micro Hat specially for this purpose. As you can see, the wiring is straightforward. The Gardening Micro Hat goes on top of the Raspberry Pi and there are dedicated pins for two capacitive soil moisture sensors. I have designed Anavi Gardening Micro Hat with the free and open source tool KiCad on Linux. The schematics are the same as what you have seen as a diagram for using on a breadboard. The ADC is again MCP3002 in a package appropriate for surface mount technology. The printed circuit board has some additional connectors and an EEPROM following the specifications of the Raspberry Pi foundation for hardware attached on top. If you have any questions, please leave a comment below. In my previous video, I've explained how to use microchip MCP3002 analog to digital converter with a Raspberry Pi single board computer. Have a look at it for more details. Don't forget to hit the like button and subscribe if you want to see more tutorials like this one. Step number two is to enable the SPI bus on the Raspberry Pi. I'm using the Raspberry Pi OS, which is the official Linux distribution provided by the Raspberry Pi Foundation. It includes a very convenient tool called Raspi Config. From a terminal using this tool, I'm going to enable the SPI interface and reboot my board. We need to do a little bit of software development. The next step is to download a script written in the Python programming language from GitHub. I have already written the script and share it in a public open source repository in GitHub. All you need to do is an open a terminal on your Raspberry Pi and execute git clone to download the source code. Please find the link to this repository in the description of the video. Run the Python tree script to get the output of the sensors. The script connects over SPI and reads the analog data coming from the analog to digital converter. After that, it transforms the data from voltage to a percentage which makes more sense in terms of soil moisture. Let's have a closer look at the source code of the Python 3 script which is available in GitHub. It uses a bunch of popular Python libraries including rpi.gpio and spi-dev. The spi-dev package is used to retrieve data from the analog to digital converter which we wired on the previous step. Valmap is the name of the Python function which takes care of converting the voltage to percentage. This way it is more human readable and easy to understand what is the sensor showing us. This is an open source script so feel free to adjust it to make it better and to contribute back GitHub pull requests. Finally we have everything set up and it is time for a demonstration. On my desk I have my Raspberry Pi 4 with the add on board and a couple of capacitive soil moisture sensors. I don't have an HDMI monitor near me so instead I'm using my computer. Using a USB to UART cable over serial communication I'm able to connect the terminal on my Ubuntu Linux on the laptop to the Raspberry Pi and run the Python script. I'm recycling an old jar with a plastic cap on which I cut a small hole. In the jar I have pure water. On the left side, on the monitor of the laptop, you can see how the values change when I put the sensor in water. The second part of the test is to bring a plant. My flower hasn't been watered in a while, so initially it's dry. After that, I'm putting a little bit of water in it and be careful, don't do it the way I did it because water on your Raspberry Pi can severely damage it. So be very careful how you're watering your plants. Fortunately, although I split water all over my desk, the Raspberry Pi is dry and it is still working as expected. The capacitive soil moisture sensor detected the water inside the soil of the plant and as you can see the percentage has significantly increased. Here is the same setup from a different point of view. 
Uh, again, we have the Raspberry Pi with the two soil moisture sensors. One of the capacitive soil moisture sensors in, is in the jar with pure water. The other one is in the soil of the plant. I still have my laptop connected uh, over serial communication using USB to UART um, dongle with the debug cable. And on the screen of my laptop, you can see the readings coming out of the sensors. Of course, you don't need a laptop to do this. Uh, if you have a monitor, you can directly attach a monitor to your Raspberry Pi and observe the results on it. Thank you for watching these demonstrations. I hope they were useful and eventually these simple examples that I've demonstrated here with both wiring and a Python application can be upgraded for your own needs in more sophisticated setup. Let's wrap it up with some conclusions. Please consider using a capacitive soil moisture sensor because it has some significant advantages compared to resistive sensors, including longer life and eco-friendly behavior towards your plants and flowers. As we have learned, the Raspberry Pi single board computer does not have a built-in analog to digital converter. However, we can easily use an external. And actually the easiest way to do it is to use an atom board for Raspberry Pi. Anavi Gardening Micro Hat is an atom board that I have designed especially for this purpose. It's an open source hardware, the schematics are available in GitHub, and it has been designed with the free and open source software KiCad. Thank you for watching, I hope you've enjoyed this video. Please consider subscribing, hit the like button, and stay tuned for new videos.